What's happened is that let's say there's the soul, the new soul reincarnating, reincar so the new Dalai Lama, if you like. Here's his spirit form and here's his material form. What, uh, there are a group of spirits in the spirit world who are all the old Dalai Lamas, if you like. Right? They're all spirits in the spirit world. All, what they do is they, they look for a person on earth who is mediumistic, who they can impress all of their memories and all of their feelings and everything upon over a period of time, usually the first 10 years of their life. So what they do is they impress upon each one, this soul, this new soul that they've found that's very impressionable, all of their memories and experiences and feelings and everything over that period of time. So this soul, by the time it's 10 to 15 years of age, is in a very highly developed natural love state, having received all of this help and assistance and memories of all of these different spirit of all of these different spirits, and they do that to continue the lineage of the Dalai Lama as a leader, a spiritual leader for the Tibetan people, and it's totally orchestrated by the spirit by spirits in the spirit world Where are they in uh, many of these are in the sixth sphere so they're in a very very good natural love condition perfect natural love condition yeah and it's their way of impressing this natural love condition upon the earth and they have a very very strong desire to continue that process many of the Dalai Lamas historically have become like have actually gotten onto the divine love path and so they don't get involved in that process. It's only the ones that are still on the natural love path that are involved in that process. But how can this be right when the soul, the physical person, has, is impacted in their free will? Well, remember, when a child is a child, it's really impacted by the free will of its parents. So many of the parents have a desire in their heart for, the next, for their child to be the next Dalai Lama, right? Well, naturally so, wouldn't you feel? Like, it's a, it's a very, na sort of a natural desire, in a way. And so they have a natural desire for them to be the next Dalai Lama, and so that creates a spiritual condition of openness in this person, in this child's soul, that allows this influence to occur. So is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, like, if we're talking about, is it harmonious with divine love? No. Otherwise, these people wouldn't be in the sixth sphere, they would be in the celestial spheres, right? But is it harmonious with natural love? Yes, totally harmonious with natural love. Because they take the child to an environment that they can control so that it doesn't have to deal with the everyday ups and downs. Yeah, their viewpoint is that they're actually protecting this child and nurturing this child the best they possibly know how and this child will not have to experience many of the things that many Tibetan children do experience yeah. because of the influence of these. So they see it as a very loving act. Right? Not only a loving act for this child, but they also see it as a very loving act towards, the, towards any person in the Buddhist faith and even towards the world of mankind generally. Because they're transmitting all of this natural love information through this person to the world, which is changing the world. Like the Dalai Lama has changed many people through their, their teachings, right? And, and so it has had a positive effect. So the way these these spirits reason it is that we are having a positive effect on the earth and this is happening by the way not just with the Dalai Lama this is happening with hundreds of different of different spiritual gurus particularly in the Indian ways all through history yeah happening constantly yeah well the beauty of the Dalai Lama is that these spirits step back at a certain age so they love, they love the child, nurture them to a certain point, step back after that point. And, and many Dalai Lamas actually explain the experience of the stepping back. They can remember that experience. And the issue is with a lot of the other types of uh, religious gurus who are being totally overcloaked, is that the spirits never step back. And they are constantly operating through the individual every waking hour or as many waking hours as they possibly can without harming the person physically. And so, you know, there are different things going on, but, you know, I feel the way the Dalai Lama is being handled is, is a lot more loving, perhaps, than the way some others are being handled. Up the back, thanks.
Can you imagine for a moment that uh, you've had a certain religious belief all the time that you've had on the earth, you pass over in the spirit world and that religious belief has helped you to get to the sixth sphere of the spirit world as well. So in other words, you've progressed through the spheres into the sixth sphere through this religious belief, through, in, in, your, in your feelings, that's what you feel, through this religious belief. So you're now in this space where you actually um, feel totally and believe totally that your religious belief has been the instrumental thing that's actually gotten you to the condition of happiness that you feel you're in. How difficult is it going to be for you to give that up? Very difficult. I imagine conditions are pretty good in the sixth sphere. There are excellent conditions in the sixth sphere. You can create any reality you want through your desire. You're just not yet at a condition of one with God. You can create lots of different things in the sixth sphere. It's a beautiful place. Remember in the second channeling that Natalie did in the Udlo DVDs? Remember how the spirit, uh, what was her name? Lucinda. Lucinda, Lucinda described the sixth sphere? That it was like sideways movement through these different amazing experiences? Yeah and a feeling she had of progressing, but then she realised after a while that it was all just experiencing the same thing in a different way. And that's what they feel in the sixth sphere. And so in the sixth sphere, it is very, very hard for you to give up what got you there. And she had to go back to the third sphere she, to progress. She had to go back to the third and exercise a real so humility. That's a big give up. That's it? a big give up. Mm. You're talking... Do they have emotional garbage? Do they still have emotional stuff that... They need to clear in order to move on beyond there? How does that work? No, it's not so much emotional stuff, but there are some basic things that they are still needing to develop. One is being a seeker of truth. Yeah. One is having complete humility. One is go, uh, having the feeling of, um, what do you call it? The feeling of, underst of understanding that they have this... Many of them have suppressed their desire for God right they're in a perfect natural love condition but suppressed desire for God and they don't let that desire grow because when that desire just grows a little bit they feel dissatisfied and they feel they're no longer perfect if they're dissatisfied and so they don't let that desire grow does that make sense and so there's a lot of limiting things that are occurring in the sixth sphere not allowing a person to grow spiritually and when they go back to the third some of those get opened the desire for God for instance gets opened is one of the things that get opened They've gone through the development of all their emotions and have got, you know, to get to the level of the sixth year. Yep. Wouldn't that feeling of dissatisfaction, wouldn't that bring a bell or wouldn't that kind of awaken them that, hang on, maybe there is something? You imagine, you imagine you've got millions of things you can create and do for a moment. You just imagine that state. You can distract yourself with anything you want. You can create lot like you can even create planets and you can create physical things and you can you can do these amazing amazing things right imagine that for a moment you can investigate any thing intellectually that you want and you can be fascinated for hundreds of years in one particular phase of investigation can you imagine how easy it is to be distracted from a yeah. little tiny feeling inside of you yeah. oh that that, that that something might be missing here yeah. can you can you see that yeah. and that's how they feel well, how do they feel towards the Dalai Lama that has moved on? Do they think that his, that he was an error thinking? There's a lot of different. How would they think about? There's a d lot of different feelings they have. They feel sometimes that they've been, that he betrayed the faith. So some of them feel like it's a betrayal of how they got there. So that there's got some of those kind of so what feelings. What does he say? Oh, I'm moving on to be bigger and better things, and they say there is no big, bigger, or better things. No, they no, they say no, they say. They look at it intellectually. They say, oh no, it's just another thing of what we're doing. Do you know what I mean? They think it's the same sideways movement they've always done. So they don't see it as anything they're different. And they're happy enough doing what they're doing and they don't allow themselves to feel a feeling of dissatisfaction. Yeah. The, I've had times where I've spoken to six sphere spirits and they have moved on to the, spirit, to the seventh sphere by going back to the third and then progressing. But only when I've connected them to their feeling of dissatisfaction in their relationship with God. And when I've connected them to that, that's when I've changed. But 
but it, many of them tell me they're not, dis they're not dissatisfied at all with their relationship with God. They have a perfect relationship with God, right? But the feeling I'm getting from them is totally different. I can feel that. No, no, and I say to them, no, no, no. You let yourself be truthful here and feel that feeling that I can feel from you. You know, that feeling that's inside of you, there's this feeling of I'm not really, really content here. Because you've put that there sooner or later they will feel it? Yep. Yep. It took, uh, like Socrates and, and uh, Plato, it took them about nearly a hundred years for them to actually, for that seed to be dropped into them before they actually changed. It took, both of those men are now celestial spirits, right? But it took them nearly a hundred years from the time the Apostle John met them, because he's the person who met them. He dropped the seed into them that maybe you're dissatisfied. And it took them nearly a hundred years of our time on earth before they got to that point where they recognized that dissatisfaction. Right? And once they recognized the dissatisfaction, they called John back to them again. And he explained to them what the dissatisfaction was all about. And they progressed very rapidly after that. <coughs>